In today's review, we're going to be having a look at the Marvel Legends Marvel Studios the first 10 years. This is Ant-Man's Ant-Man and Yellow Jacket. When the government attempts to seize Hank Pym's Pym Particle Shrinking Technology for use in warfare, Pym trusts in the help of petty criminal Scott Lane to don the Ant-Man suit and strike back against corruption. Geared up as the half-inch hero, Lane must stop Pym Industries representative Darren Cross before he sells the shrinking technology to Hydra and enables them to create a new army of unstoppable shrinking secret weapons. How about we first figure out how tall these figures stand? If we put it next to Darren Cross, the yellow jacket, the figure stands just shy of being seven inches in height. Scott Lang, on the other hand, the Ant-Man stands almost exactly six inches in height. What's cool about the figures is that they come with microscopic versions of themselves. Of course, they should be, after all, if they're capable of shrinking in size, why not have figures with shrunk down versions of themselves? And sure enough, that's what they have. So we have Ant-Man and his corresponding villain, uh, Yellow Jacket here, in pre-pose. They're stacked, and obviously they're not going to have any posability to them, but you have both Ant-Man and Yellow Jacket presented here in smaller form. I do quite like that, and to the credit of Hasbro, they actually have gone in and painted not all the details, mind you, but the necessary details to get a po the point across that this is, yes, in fact, Ant-Man. So he's got the silver helmet and the red across his chest. Unfortunately, no silver in his chest, but beggars can't be choosers. And then, of course, we've got ourselves Yellow Jacket, which has the a sufficient, sufficient enough amount of yellow added to his chest as well as in his eyes. And a yellow jacket, by the way, as well, also has his adjustable arms. Again, these are just stacks and you can't do anything with them, but I do appreciate for the fact that they do come included with the figures themselves. Moving those to the side and trying our best not to lose those. Yellow jacket, of course, will have to come with his uh, armored up armature, if you will, his uh, actual stinger arms here that can be posed. They have their own individual hinges here. Uh, let me just actually, I'll run through the posability. We'll look at close details here first, and then we'll attach it. It actually just attaches via this peg to the back of the figure. Um, but he does have posability on the top here via ball joints. Does have a ball joint here, which allows these to rotate forward. They do sort of get in the way of one another. I just want to show you that these do rotate all the way around. Um, a little bit of a hinge happening here as well. And then you've got a swivel hinge here. This also hinges here. I thought for a second that... Let me just show you here. I thought for a second that there was a, a hinge uh, right... Let me just show you here. I thought there was a hinge actually right in there, but the hinge is a little bit further up. So you got a hinge, hinge here, and then a hinge down below here. And uh, then the rest of it is just really just soft plastic. Don't be bending this in any excessive amounts because this probably, uh, you're, you're going to warp this and create stress marks. That's certainly the last thing you want to do. So uh, articulation here, articulation here, here. And uh, this can also, these can also rotate. Little accents of yellow certainly go a long way in Yellow Jacket's backpack or knapsack. I suppose it would more be an, an articulated backpack. We'll go on to his back via the peg here. Just grab the figure. You'll see that there's the peg on the back and that just attaches into place. It definitely gives the figure a little extra mass to him above and beyond simply just having him as a straight out figure. Uh, of course, this is a excellent way of displaying the figure. I'm so glad, of course, for obvious reasons that they would have included these. And again, if you just wanted to, depending on how you want to display him, you can hinge these, 
really have them any which way that you want. I kind of like the idea of having them slightly off to the side. And then again, you can just kind of adjust the top accordingly, depending on how you, how you really want them. Yellow Jacket, really, to be all honest, is the reasoning why I wanted to pick up this set, to be honest, as well. Look at all this honesty happening during this review. I did want to pick up a lot of the Marvel Studios, the, ten, the first 10 years, uh, because I'm impressed that for storage we get me we get exclusives for example as well but above and beyond that it's cool that we're celebrating 10 years could you imagine 10 years of Marvel films Ant-Man being one of my personal favorites and more the reasoning why I'm looking at this set before we're looking at the others I loved Ant-Man I haven't yet had a chance to check out the new Ant-Man but I'm definitely looking forward to seeing that and uh, I'm really digging the look of Yellow Jacket here I hope down the road we will get ourselves a Yellow Jacket Hot Toys, which I know at one point was slated. I don't know if they just outright cancelled the figure because I'd love to get this guy in a 12-inch ver uh, version of himself. But in the meantime, I can certainly appreciate him in the 7-inch variety, or just a little over 7 inches. Uh, as for his face sculpt, you can see that his eyes, or the equivalent of his eyes, is underneath this translucent yellow plastic which covers over the front dome of his helmet. It gives him certainly the look of the yellow jacket. I love the, like I said, I love the translucent of the yellow there. Uh, as for the rest of the yellow, this is where we start getting exciting. Uh, really some cool kind of honeycomb effect that they've done with the yellow. It doesn't make its way anywhere into the black. The black instead is kept very smooth, very uh, untouched by any additional paint. But this honeycomb effect really does wonders for the figure. It gives it that extra little bit of texturing that one will appreciate, certainly I do appreciate it, having it present on the figure. For that reason and that reason alone, the paint is generally pretty clean because there's not really a whole lot of paint to be said. Anywhere there are yellow, um, like for example up here, generally is the, the, for the most part pretty clean. It gets a little on the, yeah, they could have probably gone in and done a second coat or maybe not gone over the edge of the line here but other than that there's not really much to be said for the paint because like I said there's not a whole lot of paint happening with this particular figure I don't know what it is about these figures though they do feel different than other Marvel Legends I feel like the plastic isn't it's not quite the same type of plastic and it's it would be hard to explain that from this person holding the figure to a person that doesn't have the figure, but it definitely feels like the plastic is different than a regular Marvel Legends. It feels almost a little on the lighter side. I don't know if they've switched to a different type of, uh, you know, percentage of plastic and different varieties of the mixture, but it ultimately causes a figure like this to feel almost, I don't want to say cheap, because really these Marvel Legend figures are far from being cheap. This particular set, I think, set me back at around $65 uh, for two figures. That works out to be roughly over $30 a, a piece, really. But the plastic does feel light. It doesn't, I dare say, hollow, but it, if I could best describe it, it feels as if the plastic has filler. I'm putting that in quotation marks because that's really just... It's not 100% necessarily true. It can't really add. I guess you could add filler to plastic, but it definitely does feel like it's a little on the more thinner side. I mean, far be it for me to be able to have the strength to do. I guess I could probably have bent this, but like the the legs have a certain sense of soft feeling. In fact, I'll actually all the plastic on this guy feels light and soft. Needless to say, his posability, his head rotates left and right technically all the way around. These sort of get in the way, but at least, at the very least, you can kind of move them out of the way. Hand, the arms hinge outward, as well as you can rotate the arms all the way around. A swivel on the bicep. Uh, he does also have a double hinge on the elbow. And he has rotation in the hand. All the while, again, doing this, I feel, I don't know, it just feels like the plastic's a little on the softer side. Upper torso crunch. He also has the waist swivel. Legs split out, forward and back, top, or mid swivel. A mid swivel cut on the thigh. Double hinge on the knee. And a good sufficient amount of ankle pivot, as well as a back and forth on the leg. Um, I do quite like Yellow Jacket 
He's really uh, one of the coolest designed villains, I think, in some of the Marvel films. Just really dug the design of him. Supposedly, he may be making a reappearance in a future Marvel film. I hope that be the case because I really do always like the I've really always liked the design of Yellow Jacket. And getting him in figure form is pretty cool. Um, joints, though, again on this guy do feel a little on the loose side. It really shouldn't be necessarily the case because I just essentially I basically got them right out of the packaging. As for Ant Man, Ant Man does come with an interchangeable head. A rather decent looking Scott Lang interchangeable head featuring one Paul Rudd. Some have said I look like Paul Rudd. I I don't I don't see it. But what I do see though is a pretty good likeness of him in this head sculpt. I might say that the eyes seem like they're wandering off. They're a little on the blank side. Other than that, I think the paint's pretty good. He looks more like Paul Rudd from certain angles than perhaps straight on. But I think a pretty decent head sculpt for it being a Marvel Legends figure. You can go ahead and grab the figure's body. Just pop the head off quite easily. And you can replace it with the Scott Lang head. Now really, in this form, you could theoretically just have him displayed with like the helmet kind of just holding in his hand. Kind of like, kind of like that. Probably do it a little bit better than me, but you get the idea. You can have him holding the helmet as if he's taking the helmet off. That's one workaround um, because there's really no indication that his face is in there. Why not do that? He does look good with the, uh, the mask off. You do get this extra breathing tube that stays behind. Um, of course, the head sculpt would be right here, or the helmet sculpt would be right there, and then the tube would be just behind it. It's a decent enough looking figure. Texturing abound. He does have some nice, not quite to the degree of yellow jacket, but he's got some nice texturing there in his upper so wake working its way down his chest into his belt. Some nice bright silvers added to his belt area, the gauntlets on his arms, and the armature or framework that makes up the uh, this suit itself. I don't know what it is about the red right here, but the red seems slightly darker on the upper torso than it does seem on the mid torso. A very small little critique, not overly too much. My biggest problem actually with all these figures, Ant-Man sadly has more of it than Yellow Jacket, but he just, his, not only his, his knees, his ankles, and his arms just feel loose. A lot of this guy just feels loose. Again, the plastic to me is, hmm, Kumsi Kumsa, a little on the debatable side, but it is a little, this guy is a little bit looser, unfortunately, as a result of it. I've also noticed too, and it only so happens to probably be my figure, but when I am moving the arm, the arm pops off way too frequently, beyond the point of enjoying this experience, not that I would enjoy the experience of taking an arm off a figure. At the very least, I can at least report that it's not broken, it's simply just a case of pegging the, the arm into the shoulder socket but it pops off way too frequently. I don't have as much the issue with this hand. Uh, this arm doesn't seem to come off really at all. I guess I could force it off, but why would I want to do that? The arms again rotate all the way around, but hinging the arms out, the joints on the shoulders are extremely stiff, which is I find somewhat laughably ironic that the arms on the shoulders are so stiff and yet everything else on him is excessively loose. We'll go ahead and take his head off. Sorry, Paul Rudd interchangeable head. We'll just pop on the original Ant-Man helmet, which I do quite like. Between the silver, the red, and that dark, it's not quite black. It's almost like a very, very, very dark gray. Some nice detailing though on the helmet itself. You can't see his eyes, which I guess, again, works better if you then want to take the helmet off and put it in between his, or having him holding it, preferably with the hand and arm attached. These, I think, are not something you would stress over, as they will not develop stress. Luckily, they use a softer plastic, so I could do this until the cows come home, and I'm not going to damage those side antennas. Smart move on Hasbro's part by making that soft plastic rather than a dense plastic that's gonna break off. And don't worry, I'm not gonna do this for the rest of this review. 
Having a look at Ant-Man's posability, his head rotates all the way around, hinging up and down. Shoulders normally would hinge outward. This arm doesn't so much have the problem that this arm has. Arms rotate all the way around. Once again, swivel on the bicep, all this stuff, yada, 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 you've seen before. In fact, you probably saw it about five, 10 minutes ago when we had a look at this guy over here. Exact same posability. Don't want me to do it for the rest of this figure? Yes? No. Okay, we'll do it for the rest of this figure. Upper torso crunch, we'll make it quick though. Swivel on the waist, split on the legs, forward and back. Swivel on the thigh, double hinge on the knee, and ankle pivot and rocking on the boot. I like Ant-Man. Let me just even say that, even adding further to that, I like Ant-Man and Yellow Jacket very much. I do love the design of these figures, but I do feel like the quality of material that initial plastic, something feels off on it. It doesn't quite feel like the same sort of plastic I'm used to seeing with Marvel Legends. I don't know if this is a new formula that they're incorporating into their next batch of figures. I really hope though that they can revert back because while as good as details as these may be on both of them, the quality of them feel debatable. Ant-Man still remains to be one of my favorite of the Marvel films over the last 10 years, so I thought it was fitting enough to when we had a look at the Marvel Studios' first 10 years Marvel Legends box sets, we would have a look, or at the very least, I would have a look at the Ant-Man and Yellow Jacket first and foremost. Picked up a couple more of these, so we're going to have a look at those in the next couple of videos, so stay tuned for that. I do really like the designs on both figures. Even though we've gotten this Ant-Man before, I think Yellowjack is more so the exclusive to this set. Both are done extremely well in detailing and paint. Yellow Jacket, though he doesn't have a whole lot of paint, I think when he does have it, it's done exceptionally well here in the yellow honeycomb effect. As for the quality of the figures, something I had mentioned a couple of times over the course of this review and probably ad nausea, I do feel like the plastic is slightly a downgraded version, a degraded version of what we had gotten before with other Marvel Legends figures. There's something about it that feels airy, little on the light side, and unfortunately joints for something that you just get out of box seems looser than what they should be. Yellow Jacket doesn't seem to have as many of the problems that Ant-Man has, but I do find Ant-Man's knees and really other than just his shoulders, an otherwise pretty loose figure. And that shouldn't be the case when you immediately get him out of packaging. If you did manage to get any one of these Marvel Studios first 10 years box sets, let me know down below in the comment section which set you picked up and what you think of the quality of the figures. Do you feel they're on par with what we've gotten with recent Marvel Legend releases? Or do you feel like the plastic might be slightly different, slightly a little on the lighter side when it comes to these releases versus those other waves? Either way, today we were having a look at the Marvel Legends. This was the Marvel Studios' first 10 years, and this was 2015's release of Ant-Man through Ant-Man and Yellow Jacket box set here. If you guys haven't had a chance to hit that little subscribe button down below, make sure you do so. We're going to have a look at, like I said, more of these Marvel Studios' first 10 years in some upcoming video reviews. Also, if you haven't had a chance also to swing over... I said swing over to the main page when you're finished with this video. Just sort of scroll down, see if there's anything that you may have missed along the way. With the level of content that I'm putting up on a regular basis, it is possible that you guys may have missed out on a video here and there. So the best thing to do it, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. It's the bell notification, ring-a-ling-a-ling, -a -ling, but... 100% of a guarantee if you head over to the main page and check out all the videos that I've posted that's your one-way guarantee to see that you may have seen either all the videos that I've posted or there's something that you may have missed and feel free to check out that as always guys thanks for watching as you always do thanks for commenting down below like reading new comments that you guys post like to weigh in on action figure conversations so feel free to comment in the section down below and we can mingle I'll see you guys next time